Hello, Facebookers, YouTubers, and all other onlookers. Jimmy Brown coming at you from Three Frog Studios here in Brundage, Alabama. Um, had a cool weekend. I uh, got a last-minute invitation to go see the Scorpions um, and uh, Living Color, courtesy of my buddy Jason Fifield. Uh, you might see him on my uh, Facebook. His, his name is Jason Fifi on there, F-I-F-I. But uh, he was gracious enough to uh, hook uh, myself and the owner of Three Frogs, uh, Olaf Lieb, uh, with some tickets to go to a cool show. And uh, Living Color killed it. They were they were awesome. Short set, five, maybe six songs tops. Uh, but Vernon, still smoking. Uh, soloing is just great, great tone. Uh, and Corey, yeah, Corey Glover just still sounds amazing. Good singer and um, good energy, especially for only having such a tiny set. They made the best of it. Uh, in fact, uh, Corey was awesome. He was walking around because it was a, kind of a everybody was eating at the show. You know, it's five, six thousand people, I guess, or maybe I guess I don't know. But anyways, uh, he, people were eating and you know shrimp platters and all this other stuff, and he went and he. Uh, was eating off people's plates. It was, it was quite hilarious. So, you know, I mean, they were offering it to him, but either way, it was a great show. Uh, Scorpions came on and just completely annihilated the place. They were so amazing. Uh, professional to the hilt. Um, they did a great job. And uh, it was nice to hear a lot of the old songs, you know, 70s, 80s, you know, going into their repertoire. It was really cool. And Klaus, Klaus Meina, and Rudy Schenker, and um, Matthias Jobs all did an amazing job. So it was very, very cool. And I uh, want to thank Jason for those tickets. That was very, very cool. Uh, other emails have subsided, and other meals, uh, other emails, not meals, but emails, uh, have been coming in. Uh, actually, again, I want to apologize for not having answered every email that has come in. It's it's a little tough um, when you're getting a huge amount every single day. Uh, I, I don't exaggerate when I say it's between 50 and 60. Oddly enough, since I started this, the video blog, uh, they're going down. They're going about, you know, between maybe like five and 15. It's, it's actually very nice. It's welcome. Maybe I'm answering questions or maybe people are just sick of trying to email me and I never answer. I don't know. Yeah. Either way. Um, but there's a, there's been a great amount of, uh, questions, uh, that have all been asked about gear. So if you are not a guitar player and you're not a gear enthusiast of any sorts, it's time to say goodbye and sign off because we're going to spend the next few minutes talking about gear. And um, and we'll see you the next time when I have some other rant or something to go on. But uh, this is for the gearheads out there. So uh, I'm here in a recording studio. I have the good fortune to work here at uh, Three Frogs um, Studio. And um, we're going to have to do a segment where we do a whole tour of the place. Uh, we're, you're actually in the control room with me right now um but uh today let's talk about some gear i get questions all the time about you know what kind of pedals i love and uh you know what 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 makes the jimmy brown guitar tone and um what kind of amps i use uh you know do you like slides and uh yes i do i, I definitely like slides I have three different types that i use um you know, what kind of tuner do you use? Well, this is what I use. Like TC, TC electronic tuners. And uh, what kind of string cleaner do you use? I mean, I, I get strange questions all the time. Uh, my favorite pick as of late, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll share. There's two two picks I really, really do, do dig a lot. Um, mostly at Dunlop. I, I haven't really strayed from using Dunlop for the better part of uh, 30 years now. Um, but I, I love the Dunlop Altex. That's a really cool, the 1.14. These are great picks. Um, they do tend to eat away pretty quickly, just like the purple 1.14 uh, Tolex. Um, so I've discovered the Dunlop Prime Tone. Now this is a great pick. They're a little pricey um, because they're... Um, 
you know, hand burnished, as they say. Um, this, they come in these cute little bags. Uh, they look all special. But I use the 1.0. I use very, very stiff picks. Um, it's just always worked for me. But get three in a bag for like, I don't know. I, I never pay retail. So, um, but I think they're like eight bucks. They're kind of pricey. They're expensive. Um, so those are the kind of picks I use. Otherwise, I've, I've uh, the the 1.14 purple Tolex Dunlop uh, has served me well. I've got bags of them everywhere. Um, you you can't go through any of my pedals, or or my cases, or my guitar cases, or my bags, or pedal bags, or anything without running into two or three. And my God, you can't even go through my dryer at home and not find some. 1.14 purple <laughs> Tolex picks. So um, that's just one of my favorite picks that I've ever used. Um, strings, you know, strings are a personal choice. Um, I know there's only like three or four string manufacturers worldwide, <laughs> which is really strange, but yet there are, you know, 40 brands of strings when you walk into a uh, when you walk into a guitar store, it's really strange. But there are those that are hand wound, handmade, and they do their own. DR's one of the companies, and, and I really enjoy them. Uh, Elixir, I really do like the Nano Web, um, the uh, ten through forty six. Um, yeah, what gauge do I use? Tens. Uh, I used to use eleven through fifty two, religiously, um, and you know BB King said, you know, as I've heard other guitar players mention, including my guitar player for Jupiter 6, Jeff Seba, he always tells me, you know, you don't need to make your fingers work so hard. Why do you do that? You know I mean? So, um, I won't use eights like BB did, but, uh, I, that's why I've kind of stuck to tens and uh, every one of my guitars have tens. Um, no, except for the Les Paul, sometimes I'll use 11 through 52 on the Les Paul. Uh, with Deliverance, I use that heavy of a gauge, but it's because we tune down and uh, we do a lot of detuning and then also we tune it up, step down anyway. So that said, that's kind of answers all that. Um, good stuff, but everything's personal preference. You know, what, what, you know, what's good to me, my, you know, what's the old saying, you know, what's garbage to one man will be, you know, priceless gem to another. So everything's based on what you think of it and what it does for you. Um, Gear wise, um, I've used a, a mul multitude of different amps over the past, uh, especially 10, 15 years, um, because I like trying different things, different new things. Um, but uh, the mainstay for Deliverance will always, always be Boogie. There was one album we didn't use Boogie. Um, and. Um, Funny story about you hear, hear what I say. I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute, minute. But let me run through real quick what what I've used for my rhythm tone. Uh, Greetings of Death demo and uh, the California Metal record and the first album was the Mark II. It was actually a Mark One with Mark Two C plus modifications. Uh, that was the first Mesa I bought, 1983 or 1984, and that amp stayed with me for a long time uh, until I moved into after we recorded the first album the self-titled Deliverance debut uh, I moved into the Mark III and I stayed with the Mark III for quite a while um, used that for the Weapons of Our Warfare record um, which the guitar tones are a little thin for me on that album um, I, I didn't like the way it, it turned out overall especially after we mastered it um, but uh, it's it's still boogie. It's un undeniably boogie. Um, what a joke! That guitar tone was brutal. That was a great tone, and uh, that was when we harnessed more of that dry tone. It was it sounds awesome though. But that's again Mark III. Uh, from Stave Execution on, I started doing some different things, and I um, I bought a studio preamp from Mesa and then a quad preamp, um, then use different types of uh, power amps. George and I bought Strategy 400s back in, uh, during uh, 91, 
when we were doing the weapons tour and then going into the What a Joke tour, um, we brought Strategy 400s to power four cabinets. And um, pretty cool, um, kind of overkill, extremely overkill actually. But um, but it was all boogie. It was it was all boogie. I'd been using boogie since '84 religiously, and um, and then I used the Mark III, the Studio preamp, and the Quad preamp, all for different uh, sections of stave execution going into learn. And then River, I had the good fortune of the folks at Mesa Boogie to lend me a prototype of an amp that they were working on called the Dual Rectifier. And uh, I was only allowed to borrow it for a little time, so I had to record all my guitar tones with that. But, I mean, the minute I plugged it in and they brought it into the studio and I plugged it in, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is the tone. And it was powerful. It was awesome. And so... Um, the rectifier was a great thing. And then right before we went on tour uh, for the River Record, uh, we did a tour called the Spring Fling Tour. Ended up moving into what's called the Tri-Axis System, which is uh, their Mesa Boogie introduced uh, this MIDI switchable preamp that could get tones anywhere from the Mark One, Mark II C+, Mark III, uh, and the dual rectifier. Um, never got a Mark IV. Didn't like them. Didn't like the way they sounded. Thought they were too fizzy and fuzzy. Uh, just wasn't my cup of tea. Didn't really care for it. Um, but uh, did stay with the Triaxis for a while. And then Deliverance was done in 96. And I quit playing guitar for quite a while. And uh, when I did start picking up the guitar again, uh, I'd moved into different amps. You know, Marshall... Vox. <clears throat> um, I didn't want to play Mesa anymore. Part of it was it was the signature sound for Deliverance, and and number two, everybody and their brother had a, a Mesa. And uh, what I really liked about Mesa is, you know, in 83, 80, or at 84, 85, 86, actually all the way until 1990, you know, we'd roll into a club to play a show, and everybody has Marshalls, Randalls, and, and uh, all these other you know, well, basically, that was it. Marshalls and Randalls, and I had a Mesa. And everybody was like, whoa, never heard of that, or whatever. And it's, you know, because only guys like uh, Mike Sweet from Striper was using it. Uh, of course, Hetfield, Metallica. Um, so I was part of an elite club, and now everybody was part of that club and made me not want to play at Mesa. I'm just being honest. <laughs> um so I tried, I started trying the, all the boutique amps, uh, clean sounds. I wanted a Vox and then a Vox hand wired and then a regular Vox AC 15 and then trying to get a hold of an England made AC 15 and then, uh, then ended up going with Dr. Z, which are Vox modeled, uh, hand wired, handmade amps that are unbelievable, by the way. Uh, not the greatest amp for me, uh, but they're, I love them. I think they're amazing. Um, and then uh, Bogner, love Bogner amps. Uh, Marshall, Marshall still makes great amps. Um, orange, love orange tone. Um, but after having owned all these different types of amps, a plethora of different amps, anytime it came down to recording a Deliverance record, uh, I had to go back to Boogie. It was just the only way. Now, the only record that there was not a Mesa product used was, in fact, uh, the assimilation record. At that time, I was convinced that digital was going to take over the world and we're done with tubes. And uh, I used a, a pod, a pod, uh, line six, line six pod 2.0, and used the rectifier setting, of course. It sounded very boogie ish, um, but uh, that was the only album. Now, when we did uh, uh, hear what I say a couple of years back, uh, Mike had brought his new toy over uh, to Alabama. He'd flown with it. It's called the Fractal. Now, don't get me wrong. The Fractal is a fine, fine unit. It's very nice. Um, I, I kind of see it as a glorified uh, Line Six, uh, but just with extremely pristine effects but I, I it's still modeling nonetheless you know um 
and there's nothing like firing up a tube amp. I mean, there just isn't, you know. Um, is there a lot of pain and pains that go along with tube amps? Yeah, you got to change the tubes. You got to, you know, do they sound the same every single day? No. One day your tone's ripping the next day because currents changed in the building or in the city or whatever. Uh, the tone changes. I mean, yeah, there's there's pains in the butt with using um, with tube amps, but still, there's nothing like them. Um, by the way, Splon, uh, I love Splon. We used a Splon uh, Quick Rod 100 on uh, the Jupiter 6 record. I love, love, love that, among other amps. But that was the amp I used for my sections in Seba. Jeff Seba, my guitar player for 6, he, uh, he used it on a couple of things. And then we used uh, a lot of his Mesa stuff. Uh, and, yeah, it just awesome, awesome stuff. But anyways... Um, this blonde quick rod is a rockin' amp. Anyway, um, but getting back to Phillips and his fractal. So he, he brings his fractal and I track almost all the rhythms, uh, using the fractal. And, uh, and then he flew back and he worked on some of his solos in California. And yeah, I just ended up coming back and retracking with a dual rectifier. <laughs> uh, he kept thinking it's his fractal and it's not, it's not his fractal. In fact, it's a combination of, uh, the dual rectifier and a Bodner 20th anniversary, uh, Shiva. So anyway, sorry about that, Mike. I, I, I exposed that secret cause he was so proud of that goofy fractal and still is. He's a avid user and, and, uh, he loves fractal. I, I me personally, I don't care less. I think they're just an overpriced line six product. Anyways, <laughs> and I know I'm going to get a lot of crap about that, but it, that's, it's just my opinion. That's all. It's just an opinion. Nothing more. You know, we already know what opinions are just like, you know, so, uh, in any case, uh, I came back to boogie as I always do because it's just a mainstay in the arsenal. Uh, I think their clean tones and their, uh, dirty tones are just amazing. Um, so what is the secret of my tone? Well, Eddie said it best, you know, 50% of it's right here, you know, and, um, getting what you can out of the right hand technique, you know, pick fingers, muting palm, um, then whatever you're doing over here, you know, everybody laughs because I don't, play like this you know all guitar players i ever know that they all play like this and they say uh, it, it just looks like i'm doing this on a, on a on a fingerboard you know when i play my solos and stuff they can't understand how i'm getting clear definition on my notes when it just looks like i'm doing this so i mean everybody has their own different technique and different style so but mesa yeah uh, i mean currently i have an electrodyne i love it and i'm uh, in the process of getting um, uh, a Mark V. I'm just, you know, I'm too cheap to pay for a brand new one, so I'm looking for a good used one. Um, I do have uh, also a Bogner Helios 100. Uh, that thing's awesome. It's a ripping amp, and I uh, highly recommend those two. Um, but clean tone on that is just ridiculously sick. It's just so pristine. Um, and the distortion, I mean, other than the Splon quick rod for that Eddie Van Halen brown sound, yeah, the, the Helios pretty much nails it. So, in any case, um, we already are at 18 minutes. I do ramble on. So, uh, tone, that's the essence of it. I got six emails. Let's see here. Yep, six emails that I count. What kind of effects do you use? that's a whole other video man because uh these things are torturous they you you, you just don't <laughs> it never ends put it that way um i don't use any rack effects anymore um and uh, i've been back to pedals for a long time and there's a reason why and uh, we'll go over that in our next video about gear um otherwise it's nice that uh the other emails have slowed down and i'm actually getting asked cool questions because that's stuff i like to talk about i did get 
um, a few over the past two weeks about recording um, here at Three Frogs. People have asked our rates. Well, our rates are ridiculous uh, as far as like good, good ridiculous. Uh, we're going to do a tour of the studio to show you the facility, but I mean, I've got, you know, our, our main room is ridiculous. It's just amazing. Uh, fully baffled sound. Uh, it's huge. It's, it's an amazing live room. It's giant sounding. And we've got three isolation booths. We've got a shower room. Where it's, it's an actual shower with tile and everything else, and we got mic inputs there. Um, uh, the isolation booths for the drums are fantastic. The vocal isolation booths are amazing, and we're working on making just a completely super, super dead room where you can hear your heart beating um, upstairs. So um, Our rates are 65 an hour, uh, and if you book three or more, we drop it down to 50 an hour. Uh, and then we have daily rates. We have all sorts of stuff. And yes, that does include my time. So um, if you do want to come down to Brundage, uh, Alabama, you are more than welcome to just give us a call here at the studio and uh, go to our Facebook, Three Frog Studios, and uh, give us a call. We'll be glad to set you up. Or you can shoot me an email here on Facebook and, um, and we'll set you up, put you on the right track. That's the that's our little slogan here. So, but um, and we're getting great tones here, uh, great sounds. Um, so there's plenty of stuff here to work with. Uh, if you if it's just you and your band, we've got we've got a nice setup of stuff that you you guys can just come bring your guitars and that's it. Um, and uh, our mic selection is very healthy. We have a very nice mic cabinet. Uh, Everything from Neumann, AKG, Telefunken, um, sure, you got it. I mean, we, 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 we've got it. So, um, Mike Prees, same thing. So, if you're interested, we'll cut you a rate. We'll cut you a deal. And, um, uh, and I, I love producing. I love working with, uh, with different artists. So, uh, and if you're with a label... Well, we'll we'll work out something with them too. So, in any case, uh, signing off, talking about the gear. Um, that was kind of boring for some. Hopefully, some people understand where I was coming from. And um, the next, we will address the effects. Um, as I showed before, we just uh, I just finished building uh, a pedal board. Uh, I'll show it real quick. Um, uh oh, don't know. something happened here. Hope I didn't stop the video. No, I didn't. Anyways, um, that is the current one, and uh, she is amazing. Lots of stuff on there, and um, don't let it fool you. That took a long time to get wired and. Have it sound right, no noise, you name it. Yeah, it was wasn't fun, put it that way. So, and there's uh, the Mesa, Marshall, Bogner, Supro, lots of fun stuff in here to use. Um, but um, we'll talk about that because pedal boards, effects, yeah, that's just saying. Oh yeah, I've got a Mobius. That doesn't really say much. Um, so, but it's really getting into what it's like to use the Mobius. Um, I'm not going to be Pete Thorne and give you professional demos and all that other stuff. I, I can just tell you from my own experience what things do. But who knows? Maybe we will. Um, but uh, keep the emails coming. I love questions. And uh, gear, I can talk all day, um, especially recording. So keep the emails coming. Love all those questions, man. Um, so it's good. I'm glad everybody's tired of asking me about my smoking. So, <laughs> so signing off here at three frog studio, Jimmy P Brown, the second, um, just saying, have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time.